Yes, it's true, another video devoted to the philosophy of editing comics. Just for you, giving you more of the inside dope that we try to teach our younger editors at Marvel. Um, all the accumulated knowledge and wisdom and, and stuff that we've put together over the course of literally decades that we want our junior editors to, to know about and to embrace and that now you can kind of take with you as well. I don't know how practical a lot of this stuff is for a lot of you. Uh, I'm guessing that most of you don't work for a Marvel or DC or a company like that. Uh, nevertheless, I feel like a lot of the lessons and a lot of these ideas are universal. They apply to anything you might happen to be working on. So let's get into it. Assuming that you have a choice, don't put forward any project that you don't like enough to want to devote crazy, crazy amounts of time to it. Because you will with any project that gets approved. I've seen situations in the past, and I sort of assume that they take place at other organizations as well, where younger editors in particular have a hard time getting their first or first couple of projects to be approved by the organization. They're young and untested, they have a lot of crazy ideas, but not a lot of experience to back them up, and consequently, they really have to have something strong and juicy to be able to uh, convince people to roll the dice and get them to a green light. That having been said, the typical thing for young editors to do in that situation is they've got a really good idea for something. They've got the pitch that they want to do, the concept, um, the character, the story, whatever it is. They're whole hog on it. They're all in. They love it. They're ready to do it at the drop of a hat, and they want to pitch it. They've also got a second idea that they like. They're happy with. They like it. They're not as excited about it as they are with the one. That's really the one. They love that thing. But that's a good idea, too. Uh, and then they make the mistake of going, well, I'm going into pitch. I don't want people to think I just have one idea or just two. Let me come up with a third. And the third idea tends to be the half-assed idea. The idea that, that, that they come up with just to fill out the list of three. It's not a real idea. It's never actually going to get done. I don't actually have to have this figured out. I just need to have enough there so that people understand that I am a font of creativity and that uh, ideas pour like wine from my orifices. Uh, and inevitably, as day follows night, like a laser beam with absolute focus, whatever analytical decision makers there are at any company will focus on the half-assed project as the thing that excites them. Sometimes because somebody involved in that chain of command will take that half idea and add a half idea of their own that they had kicking around and going, wouldn't it be great if he was a bullfighter? And, and now suddenly as an editor, you're stuck with this Frankenstein monster that you put forward that is, was only half-assed and that you weren't all that invested in and that now somehow you have to make into a bullfighter and you are going to spend hour upon hour over the course of months turning that into a real thing. And it is probably not going to be the greatest comic that you put out unless you get very, very lucky and you're not going to enjoy it as much as you might something else. I know it maybe seems counterintuitive. You are better off pitching just the two projects or really even just the one project that you actually believe in. Do not put anything forward that you don't want to actually do. It will come back to bite you in the backside. There is one more key aspect of editing that I need to make very clear, and this is crucial. And it is the metric by which I judge the editorial prowess of the people I work with, of my own skills and how well or poorly I've done on a particular thing and everything that they're in. And the metric is this. The editor cannot, cannot, cannot make the project good. Only the creators who are actually writing and drawing the material can make the project good. What the editor can do is make the project better. And the metric that I use, the yardstick that, that uh, I have to measure how well a particular editor uh, did on a given assignment is how much better did they make whatever project they were working on. 
because the editors are not the performers, are not the writers, and not the artists, and should not be, they can only affect the, the work from a tertiary standpoint. That having been said, finding weak spots and shoring them up, coming up with ideas or springboarding better thoughts from your creators is always welcome. Looking at finalized pages as they're coming in, as they're getting lettered and colored and everything put together and finding ways to make things clearer, make them more emotional, make them more involved, make them more investable. These are all things that the editor can do to make the book better in its final form. But an editor who uh, is trying to make the project good, objectively good, is, uh, is going to be met with frustration. That having been said, it is absolutely possible for an editor to make a project bad. It is entirely too likely that an editor can, can ask for things or make changes or demand redos and such that shave away all of the joy and all the life out of a project. Sometimes the right thing to do is nothing at all. And this is where the 90% rule kind of comes in. If you have excellent creators, it's not about you. You don't have to put your thumbprint on every page that gets put out. And if something is good, leave it alone. It's not about you. The editor, in effect, then, is a lens. Amplifying what is there and either putting it into greater focus, priming it like a laser, or else making it all more blurry and indistinct and not as, as good. That ultimately is the function of the editor. The editor is a lens. My final point for uh, this particular session uh, is this. Your reputation, your individual reputation as a human being and as an editor is literally the only currency that you have in this business. Therefore, you must safeguard it in all of your dealings with your talent, with the world at large, with other people uh, and departments within your organization, with everybody. Everybody in this business likes to talk, and we certainly all like to talk about one another. And any story that's about you will uh, exaggerate and blow up and change and be from perspectives that are not your own. And so the better you are seen by your peers and by the talent, the better you will be seen and, and recognized by people coming into the business, and the easier it will be to accomplish all of the earlier objectives that I laid out. As always, I appreciate your time and attention. Thanks for being here. We'll be back again with more of this, assuming that I don't get bored and decide to stop making these videos. But I don't think so. I'm, I'm pretty good at following through. So hopefully I'll see you all back here before too long, and we'll continue our voyage into the philosophy of editing comics. Thanks a lot.